I ask the congregation to remain seated until the processional hymn. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Reading from the book of John, 12th chapter. The next day the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm leaves and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, you're sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered these things that had been written about him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. Pharisees then said to one another, Look, we can do nothing. The whole world is going after him. Here ends our gospel. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, of the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.
congregation to be seated during this rather lengthy gospel lesson <coughs> in the book of St. Mark. And we begin reading in the 15th chapter, first verse. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation. Elijah will take him down from the cross, the crowd said. 
Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Peter was the only one to make it almost to the end with Jesus, at least in the Gospel of Mark. In the 14th chapter, they have this conversation. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And Jesus kind of figured that all of his closest friends would turn pale and run. Which they did. In the Garden of Gethsemane, where Mark tells us, they all forsook him and fled. But not Peter. Not Peter, the braver. The stout one. Kind of bragging that I have heard from many people before, but here's Peter. <coughs> Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not, says Peter. Even though all become deserters, I will not. Many folks, when asked a, a academic question, I guess you could call it, uh, how steadfast would you be with your faith? When answer, well, I'll be your like a rock. And so we read these texts and we wonder if Peter and the rest of his disciples would indeed let Peter got a little further than most. But ultimately, as the Gospels tell us, the good news tells us he also denied knowing Jesus and fled. First, these are just words on a page for us as we wonder about their lack of courage, their lack of sticking with Jesus. Let's try to put ourselves in Peter's place. Many years ago, there was a film put out about the last days of Jesus called The Passion of Christ. Many of you no doubt have seen it. I remember after showing it to my congregation during the Holy Week part of our church here, more than one person came up to me and said, that was just too bloody awful. It was almost more than they could take watching the torture. Well, my friend, put yourself in Peter's place in the courtyard of the high priest and just know that if you had stood up and said, I was with him, there would have been a fourth cross on that hill, the two bandits, Jesus, and you. And perhaps because you lived in Palestine at the time, you knew a little bit more about crucifixion than we do. More than just words on a page. Jesus died alone, even to the point where he saw himself as being forsaken by God. And all of us folks whose courage burns hot in a Sunday school class.
class. I find it a little less hot when the rubber meets the road. And yet these same disciples and Peter are told to travel <laughs> out to Galilee in the book of Mark to greet the risen Savior whom they did not. In a sense, Jesus knows what it is to be us to the point of feeling forsaken by God and alone. And in the midst of his forsakenness and his suffering and in his death, he brings us along even though we're not there. He brings us all up into the cross because the blood that was shed was blood for us. And the forgiveness that is given out was given for us. And despite the fact we probably would have been with Peter and the rest of the disciples, I take it into Galilee as fast as our little legs would carry us. Jesus is going to go out ahead of us to greet us and forgive us and to love us. Be on this journey, this Holy Week journey, from Palm Sunday. Monday, Thursday, to the cross is to remind us of the very aloneness of Jesus. And though we're there remembering, chances are we wouldn't have been there 2,000 years ago. But still, our Savior invites us to share his Easter triumph. And that, ladies and gentlemen, comes next week. I hope to see you all here. God bless you.
Lord, make his face to shine upon you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our final hymn.